Hey everyone, so um, just really quick, I wanted to go through something that just went live a few minutes ago. So FBREF, uh, the, the uh, world football stats site from the sports reference crew, the makers of baseball reference, basketball reference, and all of those awesome sites, just dropped a major update to FBREF uh, using data from StatsBomb, which is really cool. And I just, I wanted to just run through some of it uh, if you're not familiar with it. Uh, so first of all, so there's there's just a lot of football stats here. So uh, we've got Bundesliga, we've got Premier League, France, Italy. We've got literally all of these leagues. Not all of them have like the detailed stats bomb data, but but all these leagues have at least basic data, and then uh, the uh, the top leagues have a lot more awesome data, which I'm going to show you uh, things through my Dortmund colored lens because I am a huge Bundesliga fan. Borussia Dortmund is my club, so I'm just going to show you through this lens just so you can see what's here. So this is the current season's club page. We've got our standard stats, which has general playing time, your, your goals, assists, and cards, and things like that, and those things per 90. Then you've got expected goals from Stats Bomb, so that's XG, then this is with the penalties taken out, and expected assists, and all of that per 90. You've got your standard goalkeeping, so there's playing time, uh, basic performance, so save, save percentage, things like that, and any penalty kicks that they faced, which luckily Dortmund hasn't had to this season in the Bundesliga. Uh, oh yeah, should should note that uh, all of these stats, uh, we've got tabs for other competitions as well. So Champions League also has the expected goal data. Um, DFB Pokal does not, so there's fewer columns in the Super Cup here. And then all competitions uh, will combine everything. Obviously, the expected goals uh, are going to be incomplete because of the Pokal and Super Cup. That's why they're underlined. But anyway, back to the other tables to see what we got. We got scores and fixtures here. So this is going to have XG data when we have it available as well. You've got your captain, your formation, your referee. Uh, unfortunately, of course, the season has stopped. But uh, advanced goalkeeping. So we've got the number of goals allowed, but then this is uh, how they were allowed. What, is it penalty kicks? Is it free kicks? Is it corner kicks? Is it own goals? Uh, Post-shot XG is the... Uh, th this is the expected goals faced by the goalkeeper, uh, but it basically adjusts for just the shots on target and how likely those were to go in. And it takes out things like own goals because those do not have an XG value. So uh, goalkeeper ratings uh, by these stats are not hurt by own goals. <clears throat> and uh, this is the post-shot XG per shot on target. And this is the plus minus. So this is kind of like uh, how many more goals allowed or uh, by uh, how many more goals or fewer goals the keeper has allowed based on what they would be expected to. And Roman Berkey is having a more difficult season in that respect. Uh, usually is not the case, but this season has been very different. Uh, I'm not sure that all of that's on him, but we'll talk about that another time. Some other numbers like how often they launch it, uh, how many of their passes are thrown or launched, or the average length of their passes, how long their goal kicks are going, so you can see if they're just kind of hoofing it, or if they're playing out of the back, how they fare against crosses, so this is how many crosses were attempted and how many were stopped by the goalkeeper. And uh, how many uh, defensive actions the goalkeeper is taking outside of the penalty area. So just so you can kind of see like their sweeper keeper uh, capabilities. All right, moving on to shooting. We've got goals, penalties, shots, shots on target, free kicks, and then some rate stats here and the expected goal rated stats. So this is where you can see things like goals uh, against uh, their, their expected goals. And uh, same thing for non-penalty. So if you're taking the penalties out of that. This is when it gets really fun. Passing. So we've got the uh, total numbers uh, completed and attempted here with their percentage. You're used to seeing that. We've got, this is brand new here. So we've got total distance in yards of all the passes. So this is like from point A to point B. That is how many yards uh, this player passed it. So uh, Mats Hummels has passed the ball 33,000 yards this season. But here we've got progressive distance. And what that is, is that's only counting... <clears throat> not from point A to point B, but how how close these passes are going to the goal. So a pass back, you're going to get zero from that. A sideways pass, you're going to get zero from it. Uh, but a pass towards the attacking goal, you're going to get some credit for it. So that's still Hummels here. 
but there are some differences. So you've got uh, <clears throat> some places, players are going to move uh, further up and down the charts based on how often they're passing uh, backwards and forwards. We've got completion uh, set up by short, medium, and long, and we've got some assist numbers here compared to expected assist. Key passes, uh, this is the passes that led to a shot, Sancho there. This is completed passes into the final third, completed passes into the penalty area, and then this does not include set pieces, so we've got crosses into the uh, penalty area. And this is the number of progressive passes. So this is kind of a raw total rather than yardage. So this uh, is different though. So this is completed passes that move the ball towards the opponent's goal at least 10 yards from its furthest point in the last six passes or completed passes into the penalty area. So this is moving balls progressively up the field and it's excluding passes from the defending 40% of the pitch. So you're not gonna get your goalkeepers getting these passes because um, here you can see that Roman Berkey has zero progressive passes. Even though he does have 8,000 yards of progressive distance, that's because uh, that doesn't take out passes that are coming from the back of the pitch. All right, now we've got pass types. A lot of cool stuff here too. So this is the total number attempted here. We've got them in live and dead situations, free kick, through balls. Uh, Julian Brandt actually leading the Bundesliga in through balls. Uh, passes made while under pressure, so that's uh, quite a bit of pressure there for Hakimi. We've got switches, so from one side of the pitch to the other, that's uh, Hummels. We've got crosses, which is Torgan. We've got corner kicks, also Torgan. So about these corner kicks, we've got in-swingers versus out-swingers versus just straight. And uh, the height of the passes, we've got the ones that are on the ground, the ones that are ground to shoulder level, and the ones that are high up in the air. We've got it by body parts. So left foot, Guerrero is like almost exclusively left foot. We got right foot. Hakimi is slightly less uh, one footed than that. But And we've got headed, uh, goal, uh, headed passes, throw ins, and then anything that does not count. Um, so goalkeeper throws would be under this other uh, category as well. So the outcomes of the passes, this is really cool. We've got the passes that were completed. We've got those that ended up uh, with the player offside. Uh, we've got those that went out of bounds. This is the number of passes that were intercepted and the number that were blocked. Now, Hakimi's at the top of this list because he's the one who's attempted the most passes. So, And he also makes the most passes under pressure in dangerous areas too. So uh, it's understandable why that would happen. Goal and shot creation. This is a totally new concept that probably could use its own video in itself. So shot creating actions. We've got... Um, so the two different, these are the two actions that directly lead to a shot. So it can be a pass, uh, whether that's live or dead, a dribble, a shot, or if the player was fouled. So what this means is the, this is the contributions to a shot. And then over here, this is the same thing, uh, the direct contributions to a goal. So the way you would read this is that uh, 22 times Jaden Sancho uh, even though he had, uh, I think it's 15 assists, there are 22 times that the last two actions before a goal included a Jaden Sancho assist. So that's not the same as like um, hockey style assist scoring because there could be other things mixed in. But uh, yeah, we could have dribbles, shots. So basically this would be a shot that led to another shot, like if it was a rebound that they scored off of. And if a player was fouled, which led to a penalty, or if there was an own goal by the opposing player. Uh, so the goal, created, goal creating actions leader for Dortmund, of course, is Sancho. It's definitely going to be Sancho, Sancho and same thing for uh, shots. Uh, you can see that he's on top of the list. Although Torgan Hazard uh, is coming up pretty, pretty close to him. Defensive actions. We've got tackles. We've got the tackles one. And then we've got where they happened in the pitch. So this is where they were attempted in the pitch. So in the attacking third, for example, Royce is, do, is getting the most tackles in. In the defensive third, it's Hakimi. And in the middle, we've got Axel Witzel. So that makes sense. Uh, versus dribbles. So this is against players that are dribbling towards them. So these tackles are just the number of dribblers coming to them. That's why it doesn't match up with the number, number of tackles here. So uh, out of the 18 people... Oh, sorry. Out of the eighty, uh, out of the fifty-two who attempted to dribble on Hakimi, seventeen um, were tackled. Uh, a percentage of thirty-two point five. That means thirty-five players dribbled past him. 
So the the best percentage on the team so far, in a, in a smaller sample, granted, is Emre Can, and right after that is Lucas Piszczek because he is absolutely invincible and the greatest footballer of all time. Uh, we've got pressures here. So the number of times that a player uh, applied pressure to the opposing player who, I'm just reading this now, who's receiving, carrying, or releasing the ball. So Torgan is applying a ton of pressure, and then this is the success rate. So this is uh, how often the team uh, won the ball within five seconds of that pressure. And we have it on a rate basis, so we can see that, well, Roman Burke has only done it four times, thank God. But uh, for the most part, uh, the defenders are getting the higher percentages here, but you can uh, see who's been the most successful in all of those cases. And you've got uh, similar to tackles, you've got pressures by each third of the pitch. So we got Hakimi, then we got Torgan Hazard in the middle. Uh, it's actually fourth, that's interesting. And then Marco Royce, of course, in the upper third of the pitch. So all kinds of blocks. We got total blocks. Uh, Matt's Hummels in the lead there. Shots, it's gonna be Hummels and peace check with 12. Shots saved. So this is basically uh, a shot on target that the player blocked, which um, not quite goal line clearance, but uh, pretty darn close. So uh, I remember Lucas is from just a couple of, couple of games ago. And then block passes we've got here too. So Hikimi is sticking his foot in the way of a lot of passes as well. Uh, interceptions, we've got Hummels, of course, and he's on top in clearances as well. And then errors are mistakes that lead to an opponent's shot. And uh, <clears throat> unfortunately, that rough uh, stage, stage of the season with uh, Akanji has him moved to the top of the list. Oh my gosh, there's more, this possession. We've got touches. We've got touches not only in each third of the pitch, but also in each of the penalty areas. Of course, Roman Burke is touching the ball in the... Uh, defending penalty area, but how about the attacking penalty area? Of course, it's Jaden Sancho. Marco Royce is right there with him and Torgan not too far behind. So these are touches on live balls here as well. So you can uh, compare live ball to dead ball situations if you just want to look at when the play is live. Uh, this is the actual dribbles by the, <clears throat> by the attacking player. So uh, the most attempts, of course, is Jaden Sancho, and he's been successful 71 times, so that's 55%. Very nice percentage, but uh, not quite the percentage that we're seeing from uh, a few players in smaller samples. Although, Julian Brandt has a very nice percentage in a decent-sized sample. Uh, same with Guerrero as well. This is the number of players they dribbled past. So Sancho's just going by players like crazy, but you can also see here that Hakimi's right, right near him. And Megs, we all know what nut Megs are. Putting the ball through your opponent's legs, just kind of a thing that they chalk up on uh, their locker probably. Carries. So this is when a player is dribbling or carrying the ball. Number of carries. And then similar to passing, this is the total distance that they've carried the ball. This can be sideways. This can be backwards. And here we've got progressive distance. So this is the, <clears throat> the number of yards carried towards the goal. We've got passing percentage for players, so why not receiving percentage? So this is the number of times they were the target of a pass, which Hakimi also leads in, and how many times they received it. Uh, so this this percentage could, could probably be seen as being more on the passer than the receiver, but the receiver also does have to do some work. So there's, there's a little bit involved in it and everything. So you can see that, uh, well, what's a good one to look at here? So yeah, Hummels, hardly any passes to Hummels go awry. Miscontrols. Uh, obviously, it's going to be your, your Jaden Sancho's at the top because they're going to be the ones that are dribbling in the tight situations. It's interesting that Hakimi is way down here, though. So 35, still a ways off of 40, considering he dribbles a lot. Uh, in terms of dispossessed, uh, that is Hakimi at the top, though, with Sancho not too far behind. So these possession stats, a lot of these are new, and they're really cool. <clears throat> Playing time, I talked about this one in the past, but basically this allows you to see when goals were scored when the player was on or off the pitch. Uh, so you can see that the most goals were scored when Sancho was on the pitch, 62 of them. Um, Roman Berkey, he plays a lot. He uh, probably is the one who's going to be on the pitch the most when goals are allowed. And then you've got plus minus, kind of similar to hockey. You've got plus minus per 90, and then you've got the... Plus minus net, I guess you could say. So on off is per 90 minutes. Uh, Dortmund is scoring more than two goals per 90 minutes when Erling Braut Holland is on the pitch versus when he's off. And this this is the same stuff just with XG-based numbers rather than actual goals and allowed. 
Let's try not to look at Marcel Smells over there. Oh boy. Miscellaneous stats, kind of the junk drawer we put everything else that doesn't have a whole table. So uh, yellow cards, red cards, and then this is second yellows just to show, uh, break those out a little bit more. Number of fouls, Axel, number of times fouled. Axel's actually second there. Most often offside. So Paco's still up at the top of the list despite uh, playing less than six pitch, uh, six uh, matches worth of minutes. Number of crosses. We don't have any Philip Costages here, but uh, Hazard is doing his best. Interceptions. We've got Matt Hummels, of course. Tackles one. This is kind of repeating some of the data that we have in other tables, but um, we have it here as well. Number of PKs one. We've got Erling. Uh, PKs conceded. Luckily, nobody. And then own goals. We've had three of them there. And this is loose ball recoveries. So when a ball is loose, who's who's snatching it up? And it's Matt Hummels uh, by almost a hundred. And aerial duels. We've got the number one, which is, of course is Hummels as well. He's got more than twice as much as anybody. Um, and the number lost, he also does have tied for the most, but interesting here you can see that they both, both he and, and Royce lost 31, but Matt's 177 and Marco 15. And then you can sort by percentages as well. So so there you go. There's some something that's uh, looking good for Mr. Schmelzer. Uh, Axel Witzel looking really good as well, whereas Jaden Sancho is winning 8.3% of his aerial duels. Ouch. And uh, this player summary just is basically a look at the goals and assists across all competitions for all of these players. It's not any of the advanced stats. It's just if you want a quick way to see who has played in each competition, you can do that. Uh, and the same thing for goalkeepers. So that's that's kind of a run through uh, a club page. Um, I have so much I could talk about, but since this just went live, I just wanted to uh, make a video to get it out there. All right, thanks. Bye.